Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press and I have perhaps the most fascinating car to talk to you about today. And this is a 2002 Toyota Century, which is a very rare breed and it's something that most of us would have never experienced it. But my cousin happened to buy it and so I have this car for a week and I want to tell you everything about it. Now one thing that's different for uh, this video today is I'm going to do it live stream style. So I'm not going to edit this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about this vehicle and the interior and the driving and you're going to follow with me on this journey to discover what this century is all about and why everyone talks about it lately all right so let's follow me and let me show you a bunch of interesting stuff first i'm going to do a quick uh, quality audit as i always do and show you why this thing is at the pinnacle or at the top of a quality rating it's the best built toyota car ever in the history and i've been fortunate because i have been to their factory when they were building the Toyota Century in the foot of a Mount uh, Fuji. It's called the um, East uh, Fuji factory, I think it was called. And uh, they were hand building this with uh, specialized uh, workers who have the best experience and the best knowledge. And eventually that factory is now closed because they're op opening up for a new prototype city called the Woven City there. And so the uh, Toyota Century um, factory has moved to Motomach factory in Nagoya area so it has moved over there but prior to that I watched this thing being built and most of you guys know that I was born and raised in Japan so I grew up admiring and being inspired by the Toyota Century because none of us would have ever own this car this is not for personal consumption it is for corporate or slash executive sort of a situation where the chauffeur drive this vehicle with someone in the back so uh, maybe Toyota Crown is something that we might buy as a family but people just wouldn't go out and buy a Sentry. So that's why it's so rare to have it. But because of all the fascination right now with the Sentry, as you know, with some of the um, top uh, YouTubers also buying this vehicle for their own joy. And that's why this is getting a lot of attention these days. But this one is a 2002 version. So it is a second iteration of the Sentry. Uh, there's a now a third generation, a new one, which looks very similar, but has updated technology and powertrain. So let's take a quick, quick look at the uh, quality control here. And you'll notice that it's perhaps indeed the best built cars in the world because you know what? It's 2.7 millimeter gap. And think about this. This is 20 years old, more than 20 years old. And the gap is 2.9 millimeter here. 3.0, 3.0. A bit wider here at 3.5. And by the trunk, 3.0. So again, if you measure the quality of the gaps and so forth and compare that to cars from 20 21 years ago you'll realize that very few cars would ever be able to reach this level of quality this is hand built by the takumi specialists who have 25 30 years of experience building cars and they meticulously build this thing everything from the panel to the actual paint job the interior this thing is built like a tank designed to last for generations after generation. And it still drives like a brand new car in many ways, even though this car has a lot of mileage. So the panel fit alignment is really good. I don't think this one had any kind of accident, so it's the original paint, original body finish. Um, let me check the paint thickness gauge to see if it's any different from today's modern car. And I'm looking for the thickness of the paint above the sheet metal. It's usually about 100 to 150 microns in terms of paint thickness, but what about here? 194, almost 200 microns on the hood. Oops, let's take a look here. Same thing, 196, almost exactly the same amount of thickness. 171, and let's do one more here. 199, so at about 180 to 200 microns, it is almost, uh, not quite twice as thick, but quite a bit thicker than any other Lexus or Toyota models because most Toyota and Lexus models are 100 to 120 microns. Perhaps Lexus might be up to 140, sometimes 150 microns, but there will be no Lexus models that have the 200 micron thickness. This is a flagship of Toyota, even above Lexus in Japan. And this is considered to be the most expensive Toyota as well, not including maybe something like a Lexus LFA, which is a limited edition model from before. But in terms of what you can buy right now, this is the most expensive Toyota model and it's the one that we all admire about. So paint quality is really good. Even though it's 20 years old, 
you can still see good reflection. This car is really dirty and needs some good polishing. Despite that, the actual reflection, the clear coat and the consistency of the paint is ridiculously good. This one has seven layers of paint, which is two more than most other cars. And it has been <laughs> meticulously painted uh, by hand and is near perfect. I can't find a single defect in terms of the plastic part, the paint, body finish. Uh, maybe there's some stuff that's worn out inside, so you'll see that when I take you inside. But the exterior panels are absolutely perfect. Now this particular car had the mirrors originally here, and they moved it to here, so just to make it easier for North American driving. So someone made that conversion. Uh, again, this one belongs to my cousin, so it doesn't belong to me, although he said that he would sell it to me. So I'm trying to figure out, does it make sense for me to own a Sentry? Uh, uh, that would be kind of cool thing to have, and maybe I will end up doing that. I'm just taking a quick look on this side. There's a bit of a paint, not a paint defect, but there's a damage here that I need to help my cousin sort it out. So I'm going to try to see if I can fix that up for him. It has, still has um, the original wheels. I believe the tires were changed a couple of times because this one has uh, close to 100 70 or 180,000 kilometers, so roughly about 110,000 miles. Uh, but honestly, when you drive it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that this one has a pretty high mileage. It just feels like it rolled off the assembly line yesterday. Now, so that's the exterior. I don't know if you guys like the design. It's very understated. You got really thick uh, C pillar here. And they say that the C pillar paint is so good that you can actually look at yourself and fix up your hair or something, your makeup before you go into a car. They say that they designed it so that this mirror finish paint can actually help you get ready before you hop into a car. Uh, this one has this kind of aftermarket add-on just to avoid to have the rain not get into the passenger area. That's pretty common in Japan. Uh, and you get the classic Toyota Century uh, symbol here, or emblem, with a V12 because it is a 5-liter V12 engine. And I'll pop the hood as well shortly which is what makes this car so special. Um, you know what they say, it's, it's a Royce Royce of Toyota, and it kind of looks like one, very classic design. It aged well because the current version of the Century, which is a all new model, retained um, a lot of the similar design features. So uh, even though it may be an older design, it has aged very well, and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's, it's not quite vintage looking, it's just classic looking and it gets lots of attention on the road because there's nothing else out there quite like it. So let me pop the hood now, show you the engine compartment and then we'll go inside and I'll show you a whole bunch of cool things that you have on this car even though it's 21 years old and it has some of the latest technology that's hard to believe that is, exists on a car of this age. So let's pop the hood here. And I'll talk about the interior in a, in a minute here after I show you the hood. So you open kind of like the old Mercedes style here. The grill comes all the way here. What, what do you notice? Well, many things. First of all, the paint job underneath the hood, which is usually very dull to save money, is actually quite glossy. So you can tell even underneath the hood, they did a proper job of paint. And look at the, uh, the matting. Usually we don't get this level of, of uh, sound deadening material that comes right to the edge. Very neatly covered all the way for the entire hood. And I guess this car has the, uh, the air uh, shocks a little bit uh, uh, worn out or weakened, so I have to watch I don't break my neck here. Uh, but uh, everything's covered, if you can't see. But it is the proven V12 five liter engine and this is the heart of this car. This is what makes this car so unique. Because when you drive it, it just literally whispers. It's quiet and it's kind of purrs. And it's the refinement, the quietness, can't be matched by anything else. I'm driving a V8 powered um, Cadillac Escalator right now, which is behind me here. And that one has a big 6.2 liter V8, beautiful engine, but still no match for the quietness and refined engine that's in the century which is hard to believe because this is the old technology, old power train, and yet they were able to design it, engineer it, build it, so that it produces almost no noise. It's just so quiet. 
So that's the engine compartment. Everything looks pretty good on this vehicle. Again, even though it's 20 years old, it looks really well built still. I'm gonna be careful with how I close the hood. It closes with a nice solid thunk. Now let's take a look inside and I'm going to show you some cool stuff there as well. Okay, so now I'm inside the Sentry, which is obviously the best part of this car. And I'm in the front uh, section here, which uh, maybe doesn't mean as much because this car is meant to be chauffeur driven. So it's really the rear section that matters the most. And I'll show you that uh, in a second here. But in terms of the front part, a few interesting things to point out. First of all, all the wood you see are hand built, hand lacquered and they're real wood, not, not the simulated or synthetic wood uh, because only real wood is used in Toyota Sentry and so both the steering, the dash, the center console has this immaculate engineer design and built wood panels where all of the uh, actual grains match so they made sure that as you go from part to part all of the pieces actually match up in terms of the wood grain and it's a very deep, very highly lacquered wood uh, and uh, it just goes really well with a dark gray interior. Yes, it's a, you know, it's a 2002 century, but designed some years before that, so it looks like a 1990s car, which it really is. But everything's functional. You'll notice many of the buttons and so forth are kind of Lexus looking, like an older Lexus buttons look like this. Uh, but just the design is actually quite sensible and practical, very easy to manage and for me I speak Japanese so this is totally fine but for those people who do not understand Japanese it might be tricky because everything is in Japanese actually even something as simple as temperature control and air conditioning on or off are in Japanese we still get the cassette tape the sound system is surprisingly good and you get a small navigation here which obviously doesn't work in North America because it's a Japanese mapping system and it's too outdated anyway but you get this nice mixture of a uh, bit of metallic finish with the wood. Uh, I get um, a digital speedometer, which is also rare. And it tells me the outside temperature, the time, the status of the vehicle. Like I have a trunk open right now, so it's telling me the trunk is partly open. And once again, the mileage is 175,000 kilometers on this vehicle. Otherwise, it's a pretty standard fare in the front. Uh, I get um, the usual mirror, a little place to put a ticket or uh, some some kind of notes over here you don't get a sunroof because they want privacy in japan for passengers so there isn't this big sunroof to open up they prefer darker and more cozy interior um, but it's really the design of the interior that impresses me in terms of the engineering in terms of the fit and the finish because everything fits really well and even though this thing is 21 years old it still looks really like brand new vehicle Everything is wool inside because that's considered the, the flagship material for Japan. They don't want leather because leather can get hot or cold in summer or winter time. So they use uh, this mixed blend of wool designed for the car interior and it's gorgeous. It looks great. This kind of a, a mixed grain looks really good and it feels great. And also, even though it's 21 years old, nothing is worn out. This material looks brand new. It looks like it came right off the showroom and uh, it's extremely comfortable place to spend time. Uh, so that's about it for the front, but let's take a look at the back here. Oh, I should point out to you that because it's meant to be chauffeur driven, there's lots of control here. So aside from the windows, which is right here, I can turn on or off seat heater for the back uh, because uh, I want the boat to make it comfortable for the rear passengers. So a lot of the features are designed for the driver here to look after the passenger in the back. So now let's hop into the rear where it matters the most. So now I'm in the back of the Sentry, which is where the passengers are meant to be. This car is not meant to be driven with the passenger in the front. It's meant to be with us in the back, usually just one person to maximize the comfort. And this is a classic corporate chauffeur car to the point where, uh, you know what, you'll find stuff that you'll never find anywhere else. For example, I can open this and well guess what it's a little bit high but i can actually take my shoes off <laughs> stick my legs through the seat and truly relax if that's what i want i won't do that right now um, but even this if in case i remove my shoes this is to help me put the shoes back on that's really cool and there are uh, straps everywhere straps here straps here and these are giant size straps not like a normal size uh, because um, you know what it's just, again trying to help me get in and out of the car 
So everything is Zuwu here, extremely comfortable. I have my little mirror here. I don't have like a big DVD screen or something like that, but Japanese business person wouldn't be needing that or want that anyway. Uh, I have a massage chair here as well. You can kind of hear the vibrations. It's a very weak massage, but actually stronger than some of those ones that we see in the newer modern cars. It's kind of like a vibration thing to get my back loosened up and so forth. So that's kind of cool. And um, there's an ashtray because back then people did smoke in the back of this car. And that's perhaps one reason why I might not buy this car, just because it's kind of smoky inside. Uh, but more stuff. I can fold down this uh, center console here, which is all covered in wool. Meticulous uh, build quality. There's a bunch of stuff in here. And it's not really my car, so I don't know what they have here. But I can control the audio, the temperature of the back seat area. And also there is a little microphone symbol. So I guess I can press this. And, oh, you know what? This is to um, allow me to speak to the driver without shouting. So there must be a microphone in here somewhere, maybe on the top or around here. And it's kind of like an um, audio pass-through. If I press this, I can talk to the driver in front in case there is a partition. Sometimes there is a, a cover here so that I'm separated from the driver. Uh, all the seat controls are here. I can move the front seat back and forth. I can move my seat also. Oh, that's the front seat, sorry. And maybe this one is just mine, is it? I can move the headrest of my seat. Uh, and oh, I can adjust if you can see here. I can adjust the actual headrest uh, uh, angle and the height of the headrest, all powered. Uh, I can also move this, oh, there you go. I can move this hood forward, which means I can recline even more. So I can kind of relax like uh, a first class cabin, which is really, really cool. I can set the memory for that as well. And here's a, oh, even a lumbar support for the back seat. Have you ever seen that? Uh, and I can adjust the height of my seat in the back, which is really cool. So that's for both this side and that side. And uh, so this is really cool in terms of what I can control. And if I open here, what do I have? I have a small TV here, which again shows an outdated uh, map right now of Japan for navigation purposes. But I can pop this out. Oh, this is to open. Push, is it push? Oh, it pops out. And it's like the old fashioned TV remote with uh, actual TV controls, DVD, not DVD, I guess it is DVD of some kind. There's a DVD player, I think, in the glove compartment. And I can uh, figure out and watch TV or movie because it has a, a TV antenna also built in. If you're in Japan, you can actually watch live TV on this uh, vehicle. I just push it in to lock it up. And I push this button. Oh, I'll, let me turn this off first. And I push this one and pop back in. And you still get the uh, golden, golden eagle or golden dragon, I guess logo of the Toyota Century. So, so much space here. It's perhaps the most comfortable place I've ever been in terms of interior. And yes, some of the big SUVs these days have lots of space in the back. But this is a, generally speaking, a very compact car in comparison to something like the Escalade I'm driving this week outside. So, considering the exterior dimension, the amount of practical space I get in the back is phenomenal. And the wool is comfortable, nice sort of uh, feel to the, to the touch and it's just so quiet especially when you take it on the road so this is the best part of the century but i also have to show you what this car is like when i drive on the road because that is also very remarkable for something that is two decades old it just drives like a brand new vehicle so let's take it for a drive okay so i am driving the toyota century now and can you even hear engine noise this v12 is so quiet uh, with uh, all the sound deadening as well you can't hear anything. It's truly perhaps the quietest car I've driven, even compared to some of the really expensive Mercedes and Lexus model I've had recently. This one is quieter and this thing is 21 years old. Hard to believe there's not a squeak or rattle anywhere. And honestly, it still feels like a car that just rolled off the assembly line. The engine is not super powerful, but if I step on it, it just cruises forward with this amazing quietness and refinement that you're not going to find anywhere because um, because this is a v12 and it's going to behave very differently from 
modern V6s with turbos or uh, even modern V8. This is the pinnacle of the powertrain. It's a gas guzzler, no question about that. But if you want the ultimate comfort and quietness, it's pretty hard to beat this engine. And uh, even though the transmission, I believe, is only uh, four speed on this one, but it's uh, shift uh, absolutely perfectly and uh, you can't even feel the shift. So for a passenger, because this is meant to be a chauffeur driven car, uh, well, this is the ultimate comfortable car. And here in North America, we don't use car for chauffeurs anymore, except maybe to and from the airport or something like that. So there's limited way to use this vehicle. But the good thing is that even for a driver, it has a good feel because it's still using old hydraulic power assist and power steering. So I get good sense from the road, a good feel on the road. And the ride, even though it's very smooth and quiet, it's actually quite stable and agile. It stays reasonably flat for a big luxury sedan and um, uh, not just the maximum comfort, but it has uh, a very smooth ride and reasonably smooth cornering ability uh, for such a big car. Uh, so it, I love driving this thing more so than I thought because I don't usually like soft luxury vehicles. I like sportier models, but this thing is simply inspirational when driving. Now, no one in Japan would normally own this. Century is designed for corporate executive and as a dedicated uh, chauffeur-driven car. So even limousine companies wouldn't have Century. It's just too expensive to buy. This thing is over $250,000 when new in terms of today's Century. Uh, I don't know how much it was in 2002 when they bought it, but it would have been the most expensive Toyota even at that point in time. So uh, even the affluent family just wouldn't buy something like this. They'll buy the Toyota Crown instead, and that would be considered flagship anyway. So you simply wouldn't um, hear anyone's experience owning or driving Century unless you happen to be a senior executive at a big company uh, that can afford to have um, a dedicated chauffeur-driven car, uh, and, and then you might have experienced it. So even though I was born and raised in Japan, I grew up there, I've never actually sat into Century it's just not something an uh, average family would ever experience in their lifetime. So what a treat to be able to drive this thing and to be able to use it, I think is an absolute cool, cool experience. Uh, I don't know if my cousin planned to keep this. He's asked me if I want to buy it and I'm tempted to do that. So that is something I might still do because it's reasonably fun to drive in terms of the powertrain just because I love the V12 engine in this vehicle. But the best part of this is being in the back seat, obviously, which I can't do both at the same time right now because I'm driving it. Uh, but uh, I know I have been in the back seat uh, previously and uh, it was uh, just an amazing place to spend time. You just well, literally fall asleep with a massage chair, uh, leg pass through so you can move your leg all the way straight and recline the seat and it becomes like a first class cabin on the uh, airplane something that you just cannot find anywhere else. I love this vehicle. I really enjoy doing a review on this one. It's very different from what I would normally do, but I wanted to share with you my experience with the Century. And especially if I end up maybe buying this, I can talk about this as an owner's perspective for some years to come. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up and maybe you can make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe to my channel? But until next video, I'm signing off for now and thank you so much for watching my video.